Welcome back to Income Trading 101. Today is August the 18th. We're going to take a look at Sundial Growers, uh, symbol S is in Sierra, N is in November, D as in Delta, L is in Lima. Uh, we're going to go ahead and just pull this one on out just to get a better sense. Isn't it funny how you slide that on over, just look at 2020 and you see this nice uh, move higher and it, it puts into perspective where we are uh, right now going to also extend back oh wow look at how that popped 2019 all the way down to 20 uh to our current price level in 2020 so let's just go ahead and uh that, that looks like it's it tighten this up a little bit um wow so we had a high somewhere close to 13 dollars, and we're currently sitting this is a penny stock at this point uh sitting closer to uh 70 well, I guess it closed at 72.49. So, um, very interesting. Let's go ahead and just go ahead and pull out our uh, moving averages. We'll start with our usual um, uh, set of parameters, which is going to be a 10, a 20, and a 60. I like my 10 to be green, uh, just because that's when price is going higher. The 20 is our mid range. We're going to put that at red, and I'll leave the 60 at uh, at what do you call it at yellow just because that's our historic and we need to be aware of that um, for those of you who haven't already done so not sure what you're waiting on doesn't cost anything click the subscribe button it really does help me out I appreciate it appreciate all the views and all the comments if you have any questions about the video feel free to leave a comment and if it's something that I can answer I absolutely will sometimes people ask questions about specific price ranges and I can't give a forecast but what I hope to do with these uh, videos is this is to just share how I'm looking at some of these companies and uh, crypto as well and uh, just thoughts on the market and how I might trade from there but I do not give financial advice this is not a financial ad advice piece this is all about uh, technical analysis and it's more educational than anything so all of that being said, you know, disclaimers, keep the lawyers happy. Let's look at what we got here. So at the daily range, you have a scenario where the 10 day is lower than the 20, which is lower than the 60. That is an indication of a bearish market because prices have been going lower. And at the moment, they appear to continue to be going lower. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and switch the time frame up to a one hour. Just to get a better sense. We're going to have to spread this out a little bit. So we can see a little better. There we go. All right. Uh, once again, we've got a situation where the 10 is below the 20, which is below the 60. So both in the daily and in the one hour, you have bearish markets. The 30 minute level, we are consolidated. So it appears that the that the 10 is higher than the 20 period but lower than the 60. So the, with the 10 in between, I call this the period of consolidation. And that's where um, you just have less clear uh, indicators about where the trend is heading next. It could go higher, it could go lower, it could go either way. Um, it's consolidating, so you just wanna be aware or maybe choose another indicator from which to trade. So I'm gonna go ahead and take a look at this on the 15 minute level, and it appears to have uh, somewhat consolidated as well because you have a scenario where the 20 period is higher than the 10 and the 10 is higher than the 60. So because the 20 is out of line or rather the 10 is between them, we call that a period of, of consolidation. So let's tighten this on back up. We're gonna go back to the daily. And this time, whoop, didn't mean to do that. Close that up right there, uh, maybe. Okay, we'll close that up. Sorry about that. And we're going to go ahead and get rid of our moving averages. We're going to dive over to the MACD. I like using a MACD, uh, the moving average convergence uh, indicator as my stochastic indicator just to show me what momentum is doing and where 
the price action is likely going to take me. Um, so uh, let's go ahead and start with the daily. So on the daily, you have a scenario where we did have a nice crossover. Let me pull this on out. We had a crossover back in June of the signal line over the MACD, which is bearish, and it ended up crossing the zero line, but we've sort of been hanging out since then. Yes, we've crossed, but we've crossed uh, back and forth during this period uh, over the last few weeks. And with us even riding parallel to the zero line, that to me is an indication of the previous trend continuing, and that previous trend was bearish. Let's take it to the one hour and see what we see at that point. So the one hour, let's stretch this a little bit more. The one hour has had a little bit more oscillations. So you had a clear uh, sell signal there across the zero line, and then a clear buy where only the MACD crossed the zero line, but then they both crossed here. And let me pull a little more contrast into the price range just so we can get a better sense of how this is working or not. And uh, we had another crossover here, but that was really a bearish crossover because the signal line, the red line, was over the blue. And then even though we are uh, bullish right now with the blue line over the, over the red, I still don't really trade this uh, indicator until it crosses the zero line. And so I want that confirmation. And you'll see why at the 30-minute level, um, I mean, almost every day, in the middle of each day, you're getting crosses that that uh don't necessarily have the relevance that you're expecting like right now uh earlier uh, a couple of days ago we had a crossover of the on uh, on august 16th where the macd went above the signal line now had this gone straight on up you would have expected this to be a bullish move however right now with us still hanging out below the zero line it appears that this just may be a crop an extended or a period extending the previous trend. Um, and at the 15 minute level, it gets really choppy, but you can get a sense rather, um, like this little crossover here across the zero line, and we've been sort of hanging out uh, less than for about six months. We just had a crossover of the zero line here, but it's hovering so close that I still wouldn't put much relevance to it. So let's go ahead and go back to the one day and we're going to take a look at this history again and do a little Fibonacci analysis to start. Pull this on down. And the reason I'm going to do Fibonacci is because we had a very large move, right? A very large move. I want to see the retracement on it. Let's see where we are. So we're going to go from the tippy top up there down to the bottom down here and just drag it over. Okay, that's not as us useful. So let's do this. We're going to do another one, another one of this larger pattern and just see how it did. Wow, I still have to uh, tighten this up. There we go. All right. Doing the Fibonacci from the top here all the way to the bottom. Maybe even pull it in around there. So in this scenario, you, you can see that the 38.2% was actually a, uh, a decent level uh, pullback. Um, we also broke that 23.6 to see if we were going to retest anything, but we went on and headed lower. And at the moment, it doesn't look like we have much else going on. I mean, I we had this one pop that set between the 23.6 and the 38.2, but I can't imagine it ever getting back to like the 50% level, which would be $6.70. We obviously right now are trading for much less, much, 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 much less. So um, because this is a true penny stock, you know, Normally, a penny stock is just any stock that trades for under $5 per share. This is a true penny stock. You can pick up a share for $72.57, which is probably one of the reasons it's pretty popular. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's just um, in this scenario, I'm, seeing, I'm not seeing the relevance of Fibonacci as much. 
So here's what I'm going to take a look at next is just regular old old school support and resistance um, just to give give a better uh, sense of what might be going on. So that obviously played a role that three dollars and eighty nine cents because we saw it at this top here. Right. You would expect if they pass that for there to be some resistance there and possibly even um, make it all the way up here, which would be great. Um, really great. Let's pull this on out again. Yeah, I made that to uh, a really small, a really small uh, area. So um, at the end of the day, that's sort of my analysis here because this is really a tough one. I can't say, let, let's expand this on back out. I can't necessarily say that I would be looking to buy this anytime soon. Um, we do have a little bit of an upward trend, um, just a slight one, right? Um, I mean, it's there, but you also have this uh, downward area here. So in the near term, it appears that we're going to be pushing lower a little bit, but um, I would imagine that we are nearing a, uh, a little bit of a stop as well. Um, I just want to be really aware of these levels. So another one I didn't put forth earlier, you've got this one here. I think uh, the previous highs are very important. You've got this region here, which is almost where our channel is right now. So we'll see if we trade between those or push higher. Either way, it's good to be aware of the indicators that may very well uh, cost you money or give you uh, a lot of an edge, enough edge to be able to lock in your own money. So that's it for today's uh, video on Sundial Growers, uh, symbol SNDL. Again, if you haven't subscribed to the video, please go ahead and subscribe to the channel. It really does help me out. And otherwise, have a great day. Happy trading.